What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So most of you may remember that last week there was an announcement about Adobe joining the Blender Development Fund. Well as a part of that, Adobe put out two add-ons. One to import Mixamo rigs, which we'll talk about later on this week, and one where you can import and edit substance material files inside of Blender. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use the new substance add-on for Blender that Adobe released last week week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So there's a blog post on Adobe's website talking about the new plugin for Substance, which I will link to in the notes down below. So um, there's more information about the plugin there or the add-on. In addition, um, there's also a link that's going to take you to a page where you can actually download this. So the first thing you need to notice, there's actually two things that you need to download for this to work. So first off, there's the Blender add-on. So that's the add-on that you're gonna download and you're gonna enable inside of Blender. There's also a tool right here for 3D integration tools that you need to install as well. So you need to install both of those files, which you can find at the bottom of this page, which I will link to in the notes down below. All right, so then to install this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into Edit, Preferences, and you're gonna install the plugin file that we downloaded. Um, it's gonna be called Substance 3D in Blender. So I'm just gonna double click on that to install it that's gonna pop this up right here, and we can click here to enable it. And so mine already has the Substance 3D integration tools installed, but there's gonna be a button here um, to do something like install Substance 3D integration tools. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go find the other file that you downloaded. So this option right here, and you're gonna tell it where that is. And that's gonna sync this up together so that then it's gonna say, thank you for installing the Substance 3D integration tools. So we don't really need to worry about the rest of this for right now. So now let's take a look at how we can use this in order to import Substance files. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you a menu over here on the right hand side of the page, which you can access by tapping the N key and then clicking on the Substance button. And so it's just gonna pop up this little window right here. And it's gonna give you two links on the left-hand side. So it's gonna give you links to the 3D community assets, which is gonna look something like this. These are assets created by the community um, for Substance that you can actually download for free. So there's a number of those in here that you can download and try out. So I think there's something like 317 materials or something like that. So it's a decent library of substance files you can download. So there's a second button over here on the right hand side of the page for go to substance 3D assets. That's gonna be the substance 3D asset library that you have to pay in order to access. So those are gonna be your two options for things that you can bring in. Um, in this case, what we wanna do is we just wanna download a material. So let's go ahead and down download maybe this metal floor rusty and I think this should say dirty um, by David Yari. So when we click on this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna download an SBSAR file. That's a substance file that you can now reference from inside of Blender. So then you can just click on the button right here to load substance material. So when you do that, you just wanna find the material that you just downloaded. So in this case, we'll go with the metal floor rusty. And so all we have to do then is just tab into edit mode and select the face. And then you can just click on the button right here to attach that as a material. And so when you attach that as a material, what that's going to do is that's going to add this inside of your um, material properties section. And you can now access that from the drop down and apply it to different objects. And so this is where the power of the substance files kind of shows up. Um, what you can do is you can use these options over here to live adjust the material that's getting placed in Blender. So for example, notice how if I adjust my tiles up, what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust the size of the material being applied to my face right here. So you can use the tiles in order to apply this to your object. So notice how you can adjust things like the rotation, but then depending on the material that you have, you're gonna have different options for adjustments you can make. So for example, this material gives me the option to adjust the amount of dirt that's on the material. So I can adjust the amount of dirt. I can also adjust the amount of rust that's on here. So that's kind of the power of the substance files is they're smart material files that you can use in order to customize materials 
um, now inside of Blender. So you can use all of these different options in here in order to do that. So you can also adjust things like the output resolution. So that's gonna adjust the resolution of the image that's created. So if I turn this down to 32, for example, you can see how this is a very low resolution. If I turn it up to like 1024, it's gonna be much higher resolution. So you can adjust the resolution in here as well. So you can download all of those different materials for free inside of the community section. So let's say we wanted to download another one. So let's just bring in this tile substance 009. So I'm just gonna download that. And then I'm just gonna click on this button right here to load that substance material. We'll just double click on that material. And remember to click on the button for attach SBSAR as material. And so notice how this material has a different set of options than the others. So this one has more of a structure section and you can adjust things like the pattern scale. So notice how when I adjust the pattern scale up like this, the pattern size is gonna adjust in here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bump the resolution up a little bit so this looks a little bit better. And I'm gonna bump my subdivision surface modifier up as well. But notice how there's other things that you can adjust in here. And so this one has options for things like displacement. So notice if I bump the displacement up to like point, we'll call it point one, that's probably gonna give us a bunch, but notice how you're getting a lot more displacement on the surface right here than we were before. So that's actually being built inside of the material. That's not even requiring us to jump over into rendered mode. But then you can also adjust other presets in here as well. So different colors, Notice how we can adjust the color of the tile, other things like that. And so real quick, if we jump over into the shader editor, and so if we jump over into the shader editor, notice how this is automatically setting up all the different nodes that you need inside of Blender in order to have things like your displacement, um, your normals, other things like that. So a lot of that's happening in this right here. And you can see how basically what this is is just kind of a regular node setup, but it's setting that up automatically inside of Blender. So leave a comment below, let me know what you think about this add-on. I will also link to my video about Blender joining the development fund if you wanna have that conversation too. So I will link to that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.